All right, so I've got all four division leaders on the board, and here's the nice thing. Points percentage, points, however you look at it, the division leaders are the same. Now, points percentage of teams that are chasing them, a little variation there, but basically, if you're leading the division in points, you've also got the best points percentage, and there you go. And remember, we're keeping track of points percentage just in case there's any kind of COVID-related issues with games, and we end up with not everybody having played the same amount of games at the end of the year. But despite all of the doom and gloom that was around about, what, a month ago? That's kind of gone away for now, and uh, here we are. Uh, and if your team's not doing very well, and if they're not leading the division, it's because they're not near the bottom of the alphabet. Washington, Vegas, Toronto, Tampa, all of them near the bottom of the alphabet in terms of NHL teams. Yep. Uh, Winnipeg is doing pretty well. Uh, there's another V team, but they escape my, my mind right now. But other than that, if you're near the bottom of the league, or if you're near the, if you're near the bottom of the, the alphabet, uh, in terms of NHL team names, hey, you're doing pretty well. Like I said, Tampa, Toronto, escapes me, Vegas, Washington, Winnipeg. Okay? They're all doing pretty well. All right, so we're going to start off with Washington, and I put them all in just a random order. It didn't matter. Washington, 13, 5, and 2. They have a 682 winning percentage. And their game's getting better. It is getting better. Um, they, they did go through a couple of weeks there that weren't that great. And they're not winning their games in as decisive a manner as the other teams on the board. Uh, second in points percentage, Boston at 675. If Boston had won that game last night in regulation, it'd be Boston's logo that'd be up here. And the lameness of the, if your team's near the bottom of the alphabet, wouldn't have been said at the start of this video. So Boston's close, but Washington is legit number one right now in the East. And they've got 10 regulation wins. They've got 11 if you include regulation and overtime wins. Which we look at in terms of, you know, how well are they doing? Are they closing up these games? How many of these wins are in shootouts? And most of the division leaders, uh, there's no shootout wins other than Washington. Washington's the only one with a shootout win. They've got two of them. Uh, they're scoring 3.32 goals per game. They're allowing 3.09. So again, if you look at the spread, they're, they're not winning as decisively as other teams. Their power play is excellent, as are all four of these on the board are respectable power plays. To me, if you have a 20% rating on your power play, that's good. And then it becomes a matter of how many power plays are you getting per game. Uh, so 28.1% on the power play, which is second out of four on the board. Penalty kill 80.6%, which is tied for last. Again, if you're killing more than 80%, you're doing okay. Um, and then it's a matter of keeping those those power plays against you down. Uh, against Boston, they're 2-1. and one. They've had Boston's number for a very long time, it would seem. Uh, against Buffalo, they've they've garnered a lot of points against Buffalo. They're 4-0-1 against Buffalo. They're 3-0 against New Jersey. And this is the thing. This is the one thing you can look at with them and say, yes, but Washington, they're 7-0-1, so 15 of their points have come against Buffalo or New Jersey. Against the Islanders, they're 2-0, so that's a strong team they've beaten. Against the Rangers, they're 0-2. Against Philadelphia, they're 0-1. And against Pittsburgh, they've struggled. They're 2-1-3. So they've won two out of six against Pittsburgh. They've gotten points in five out of six, but they've struggled against the Penguins as has been historically the case. And they've only got the one against Philadelphia. So for me, I, I do see them as probably ending up first or second in that division, depending on what happens with Boston. From here, Boston, it feels like it's kind of fallen off. But again, uh, a lot of those points are against Buffalo and New Jersey, which is not that unusual. You look at these gaudy numbers these teams are putting up. Most of them are beating the teams they're supposed to. So for me, Washington, if I had to rank them right now, I'd say Washington is the fourth best of the four division leaders. Vegas, 14-4-1. They've been excellent. 763 winning percentage, which, which is third on the board. Think about that. A 714 winning percentage over an 82-game season is considered fantastic. These guys are at 763. Uh, behind them, second in their division, Colorado and Minnesota have a 625 winning per, or points percentage. So there's a pretty good cushion here for Vegas, either way you look at it. Um, 11 wins in regulation, 14 in regulation and overtime. Uh, 3.21 goals per game, which is the lowest on the board, but 2.11 goals against, which is the second lowest on the board. They're winning their games by about a goal a game. So this again, you've got a 0.23 spread here. You've got more than a goal a game here. 
Vegas is playing very well, despite their power play being the lowest on the board at 20%. Their penalty kill, 88.2%. Their penalty kill's been fantastic. They're almost the same as what Tampa Bay's been putting up. If you look at who they're, you know, racking up the points against, they're 4 and 1 against Anaheim. They're 3 and 1 against Arizona. They're 2 and 2 against Colorado. So again, that shows that Colorado, while we've talked about just yesterday, Colorado's start now it isn't necessarily where we want it to be. Um, Colorado plays well against Vegas. Against LA, they're 2 and 0. Against Minnesota, they're 2 and 0. Against San Jose, they're 1 and 0 and they lost in extra time against St. Louis. So they haven't played St. Louis a lot. They're they're halfway done with Colorado and they've split it. And against the teams in California, they currently sit at four, six, seven, and one. So that is that has been a huge part of what their record is. And this is where playing in this this tournament style that we're seeing for the NHL this year, it definitely means we're going to see some gaudy totals. We're also going to see some scary totals at the other end. So Vegas, for me, if I had to rank them out of these these four teams on the board, I would probably put them at, in terms of Stanley Cup chances, and of these four teams, I would probably put them second. It is hard not to have Tampa at first. And I know Toronto fans are, are, are going to chime in, so I'm going to say this. For Toronto, as we get into them here, there will be questions asked until they actually make that final four and we see them against an American team. Toronto is 18-4-2. Their winning percentage or points percentage, 792, is absolutely the best. It, it is. It's the best. And their second in points percentage in their division is Winnipeg at 659. Uh, Winnipeg has had a very, very good start to the season. And yet, they are nowhere near Toronto when you look at points percentage. But they also haven't played Toronto that often. They have eight more games left against Toronto. I believe it's eight. might be nine. Um, I'm not sure if they're playing nine against Winnipeg or ten. But anyways, uh, for Toronto, they're three and one against Calgary. They're five one and one against Edmonton. They've basically destroyed Edmonton. You know, these last three games uh, ruined Edmonton for now. We'll see whether or not they bounce back. Montreal, they're three and one against the Habs. They're three one and one against Ottawa. So while we all had a good chuckle at them blowing that five to one lead, that was the exception rather than the rule. And they've still won three out of five against Ottawa. And they've recorded points in four out of five. They've won three against Vancouver. They're playing the Canucks tonight. And they've won that one game against Winnipeg. And again, people are going to come back and say, well, wait a minute. There's not really a contending team in Canada. We know Edmonton chokes in the playoffs. And they, they did it in last year's playoffs against Chicago. And Vancouver overachieved. And their goaltending dragged them as far as they could. And they weren't very good. And, and Montreal was, you know, 24th in the league last year. You've got Ottawa that we know are still rebuilding. Calgary, they're just on the downswing. So the argument can be made about virtually every team in this division that they're just they're they're not as good as what their record might be in a Canadian only division. So this is the problem Toronto's going to have. And I I would love to say, you know, if these guys win like 15 in a row, that people are gonna say, you know what, they're legit. Nope. People will use that as an excuse to say, actually it's their division. Toronto's not that good. It's their division. Their division just isn't good, so it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to make that argument. I will say, when you look at the numbers, they have 16 wins in regulation, 18 if you include overtime wins, nothing in a shootout. Their goals for 3.63, which is the highest on the board. Not surprising considering the way the North has been scoring goals. But their goals against of 2.33 is much lower than Washington's. It's not that much higher than Vegas. And... It is higher than Tampa's, but Tampa's ridiculous. So for Toronto, what's interesting is they're scoring about 1.3 goals per game more than they're allowing. Now, that definitely helps with the Edmonton trio right there. That that set of three games definitely propped up their goals for and brought down their goals against. Their power play, 32.5% is the highest on the board. Again, the argument would be, but the teams they're against. Their penalty kill, 80.6%, which is tied with Washington. And again, it's who they're against. So I would right now put them probably ahead of Washington. And I, I know that would be probably kind of a tough sell, the idea that Toronto could beat Washington in the series. But I think right now, with how these teams are playing, I, I really think Toronto could. But that's the problem that whoever wins the Canadian division is going to have. The pressure is going to be on to prove that the North is not just a division of teams that are middling or not very good. 
Um, I I personally think that if the divisions were normal, if this was a normal season, that Vancouver's record would be be, be better than what it is right now. But again, that's just an opinion, and right now, um, it they're they're at the bottom. So, and you know them in Ottawa, but Ottawa was expected to be in that position. Vancouver not so much. So we go to Tampa, and Tampa I think is an excellent pick if you want to say that you think that they can win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. I, I can't make an argument that that's not possible. Their numbers tell you it is absolutely possible. They're 15-4-1 for a winning percentage, points percentage. So I'm used to saying winning percentage. I'll get used to points percentage. 7.75. Uh, second in points percentage in that division is Florida at 7.14, which would put Florida ahead of Washington, right? So for points percentage, they are second. They're ahead of Vegas. I do think that right now they're just a machine. They're doing this without Kucherov. They've done it at points without Sorelli. They did it without Stamkos for a couple. They just they just keep doing it. And Vasilevsky, I think, is playing some of the best hockey of his career right now. Um, made Dallas look like, well, Dallas. And, and he's, yeah, he's probably the best goalie in the league that people will then turn around and say, but he's overrated. Okay, but he's not. So, anyways, we can all have that debate at another time. Tampa Bay's got 14 wins in regulation, 15 in regulation and overtime, 3.55 goals for, which is second. They are ahead of Washington, they're ahead of Vegas, they're behind Toronto. But their goals against per game, 1.95. I repeat, 1.95. They are outscoring their opposition by 1.6 goals per game. This is ridiculous. And this is against some pretty good teams, too. So their power play, 26.5%. Their penalty kill, 886 So their power play is third. Their penalty kill is first of these four teams on the board. They're 3-1-1 one, one against Carolina. Carolina is a very good team. Uh, they're 1-1 one, one against Columbus. They're 2-0 oh against Chicago. So they've got six more against Chicago to come. Uh, they, they wiped out Dallas twice. Uh, they've beaten Detroit twice. They're 1-2 and two against Florida. It'd be really interesting to see how the rest of that season series with them in Florida goes. And then they're 4-0 and against Nashville. So they've they've had a ton of points against Nashville and against Carolina, who, again, are a pretty good team. So, again, the interesting thing with this year is you're only going to see those teams. We will not see these teams against each other. And when we look at the playoffs and you look at the amount of parity, and then you have to remember, too, because these teams are all going to see each other eight times each in the States, nine or ten times each in Canada, it is possible that when you get into a playoff series, a top seed, one of these four, may be matched up with a fourth place team that knows how to beat them and has played them eight, nine, or ten times and is well versed in how to beat them, who to shut down, and how to make this work. We will see a level of familiarity in the first and second round of the playoffs we have never seen and then in the semis and in the finals, there's absolutely none. There's no familiarity whatsoever. And it just becomes crazy at that stage. So, which team do you think of the four division winner, division leaders, possible division winners, which of the four division leaders do you think is the best of the four? And which one do you think may end up falling out of first by the end of the season? Or which ones will fall out of first by the end of the season. Let me know what you think in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And we'll talk to you again soon.